Hey guys, AJ with Relentless Racing. I just wanted to show you my setup. Here I have the 1ZZ. She's completely out of the vehicle. You can see there's the vehicle and there is the transmission. So today I'm going to be working on switching out the head gasket on this thing. I'm not so sure if you could do this in the vehicle, but I'm convinced that you can. not So I pulled the whole thing out. Do you have to pull the transmission? Probably not, but I just wanted to put it on the engine stand and work with it. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the wiring harness and let's get started. So I'm going to start on the harness in the back right here. Here is the end that came out of the ECU and out of the car. So I'm just going to start pulling on these things get, to get them to release. Here's a big one right here. There's another sensor right here in the head. And don't forget to grab these guys. Next, let's move on to the coil wires. Don't forget to release these guys right here. Those are all 10 millimeter heads. Okay, now that we got all those things off, now I'm gonna remove these two just to make things a little bit easier. This guy right here. These are new hoses from the last time I worked on this thing. Give it a little twist. Oh, it doesn't mess up the hose. There she goes. And then we'll release here. And it looks like there's another one there. Let's go to these few injectors for three, two. I already moved one because I used the chain that attached to right here when I pulled the motor. There it goes. Fancy tool here. And now we should be able to release this guy right here. There it goes. Okay, I'm gonna rotate the motor around and we'll show this section right in here. And to get the other parts of the harness out, we're going to have to remove this guy. So now let's rotate at the alternator. There she goes. Back. A little squeeze here. Okay. It's a 10. So before I take off the intake manifold to completely take off the harness, it looks like I forgot to remove this ground right here. And I forgot to take off, I think it this is a cam sensor right here. So don't forget to take these two off as well. She goes and use a 10 millimeter. So I think the next thing that I'd like to do is I'd like to take off the intake manifold, but I want to take it off with the throttle body attached. It looks like there's a collection of these hoses right here. And also there's this hose right here. So you can see that they're connected. So this hose is connected to the intake. You can kind of see it in there, but these two hoses right here, are connected to the water line. Maybe that's the better thing to do is get it off of these guys right here and then we'll pull off all the bolts for the intake and then we can get to the rest of the harness. Let's try it. Okay, so here are the two lines that we need to get off, this guy and this guy. There we go, like that. And then we can go like this. And then give it a yank. This guy's a little bit more challenging, so I'm going to use this 90 degree needle nose pliers. There it goes. There she goes. Got her. Okay. Now we should be able to remove the throttle body with the intake. That is the fuel line right there. And look at that, came off in one shot. I replaced this thing the last time I did this guy, so that's probably still good. And then here you can see the rest of the harness that we need to take off. Let's grab the easy one right here. This is a oil pressure sensor, I believe. And 
then let's take it off from right here. It's just a little plastic tab right there I was trying to get off. Of course, we can get this guy out of here. I'm gonna release this one right here with my needle nose pliers and this one right here with my needle nose pliers and I'm gonna cut that. So let's just cut this guy real quick. This used to be a connector, but I'm sure it just disintegrated over time. So I just tie wrapped it right there. And now just be real careful. Use the needle nose and we can pull this guy out. There's that one, 90 degree right back in here. And there it pops out. And if we disconnect this guy, this is to the crank sensor. Now we can take off our harness. And there is the whole harness removed. So there's these little spacers that go right there. There's two of them. So the other one goes right there. And then make sure that your injectors come out with the O-rings that are in there. So there's still one left in here. So I'll pick that thing out real quick. Careful not to scratch anything. Just pull on this guy just like that. We'll clean that up before we put it back on. Cam sensor. What is that? I don't even know. Ooh, look at that. We should replace this O-ring right here. Uh, this is probably for the VVTi controllers what this is. It's similar to the VTC controller on the Hondas. But uh, we should replace that O-ring as well. Let's get our spark plugs. All right, so we're here now, we're at the back. So let's remove all these 10 millimeters off the head and then we'll put them in a bag. That was for the ground. This is some bracket for the harness. Here's that second ground, another bracket for the harness. And you've got this guy right here, this water pipe. And finally, you have a ECT sensor. Not an O-ring, but a crush washers. And let's take off this plug as well. Okay, it's that time to pull off the valve cover. There's one 12 millimeter socket required over here and the rest are 10 millimeter. Good pray area right here. I just changed this guy so and this guy, so those should still be good. And to make things a little easier, let's remove the dipstick line right here. Like that. That is another 10 millimeter head. And then there's a little O-ring down at the bottom of this, which I replaced recently. So as an exercise, let's rotate the crankshaft 360 degrees and we'll line up the divot. You can kind of see the divot in there. And we'll line it up with the zero one more time. And then we'll take a look at the cam gears and see what it looks like when you're not at top dead center. Whoa, that came up fast. Okay, let's line that thing up. There it goes. Now let's look at the cam gears. So you can see that the exhaust gear, cam gear, the dot is not in the right spot. There should be around here somewhere. And notice there's no line here and there's no line here. So if I rotate again, 360 degrees, it's gotta go slow here. It really likes to move right here, so you gotta be careful. Slow. That looks pretty good to me. Okay. And look. There are the two dots, and there's the dot up here, right there, and here's the line right here. That means that we've got top dead center. So now we're gonna stay here for a little bit, and we can now take off this front cover area right here, and we can also take off the timing chain tensioner, and also we can take off all of this stuff as well.
So let's remove the water pump. There are different size bolts on here, so be aware. Here's a short one, and I believe the other short one is, could be wrong. Nope, that's a long one. Here's the other short one. Caution, Emergency. be very careful because this may Emergency. drip quite a bit. So calm. make sure that Emergency. when you're about to release Emergency. this last one, hang on to it Please and you have a drip pan calm. underneath. And don't forget to remove this guy. I'm gonna end up replacing this guy. Even though it's new, I just wanna make sure there are no leaks. All right, let's pull off the crank sensor. We got this guy and this guy, both 10 millimeter heads. So you've got your timing chain guides right in here. You have to get this um, sprocket off. Pull this little sprocket out. Kind of have to give it a wiggle. These things are typically pretty tight on here. Try not to bend it, obviously. There she goes. Hang on to this thing so it doesn't fall down. This is a little filter in here, 14 millimeter head. Be real careful. There's the little filter. Here is the bolt that I took out. There is a crush washer here. Okay, so now we're gonna actually take off the cam caps and keep in mind that the motor was set at top dead center before we start all that stuff. So, the main thing to remember on this guy is to go outside, in. So these are 12 millimeter. And then we go to the 10 millimeters. Guys, on these. So if you look closely, all the cam caps have numbers and letters on them. So the I5 means that that is the intake and it is the fifth one. And they're all pointed, they have a little arrow. Look, there's I4, I3, I2, I1 would be this guy. And they all point towards cylinder one. And again, on the exhaust, these are marked as well. 5, E4, E3, E2, there's no E1 because that's that big piece right there, but that's that side right there. So don't worry about mixing those up. You really can't because they're identified. So now I'm just gonna pull these guys off. Pull the cams out. For the head bolts, we're going to be using a 10 millimeter double hex. So we'll start from the outside and move to the inside. So now we're going to pull the head off. Everything is released. We've marked all of our buckets. There's nothing attached all the way around. We're going to lift straight up. So here you can see there's a bunch of oil in here. I removed all the head bolts. The washers are still in here, but since they're so dirty, I'm just gonna flip it over into here and just let gravity do its work and it'll pull the oil out of it. Also, it'll give me a chance to check out the other side and see if this guy is flat or not. So I'm gonna wipe this thing down. You could hear the washers dropping underneath. So I'm gonna do the same thing with this thing. So there's obviously still coolant in this guy and there's a little bit of oil but I'm gonna tip it over, let it all drain out, we'll wash this thing up, and then we'll check if the deck is flat as well. 
I'm gonna put my hand over this guy so it doesn't spill. And I'm just gonna spill it into my drip tray like that. And I'm just gonna let it sit that way. Let gravity do its work again. I was originally just gonna replace the head on here, but I'm kinda dying to know what the bearings look like. So let's get this bottom in it. Let's at least look at the rod bearing. So let's take off the bottom end. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to loosen all these guys and then I'll remove it from the bottom. So now we have the motor upside down. Here's cylinder one, here's cylinder four. So I can take a hammer right now and just whack these things and it should drop the rod from the other side to separate them. So now I could actually remove these guys and let's just take a look at that bearing. And let's see, the orientation. It looks like it has a nubby pointing out that way. Let's just see what that bearing looks like. Oh, look, it stayed on. Let's see. It doesn't look horrible. All right. That's a good sign. That's a really good sign. Yeah, there's some wear in there, but not anything that's like, you know, drastic scarring or what have you. So I'm kind of liking that. Let's take a look at the other side will pop the other side out and I could actually grab the bearing from this side here it is right here so that must have been debris that is that is actually embedded in the bearing those are ones so before I pull the piston out you can clearly see that there's a scar right here you see that little shiny line right there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off my glove and I'm going to use my fingernail. Yeah, I guess I can feel it a little bit. Yeah, I can feel that. But you know what? Again, this thing only has to run for a little bit. So let's pull out the piston from the other side. This is a little special hammer that I have. I'm not so sure where I got. I don't even know so sure what it's used for, but I've had this thing for years. And it just seems to be like the perfect piece where I can kind of hang on to it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the bottom of the rod and I'm going to rotate it so that way it doesn't scratch the cylinder bore and I'm going to push the whole thing down so that way I can grab the piston on the bottom. I'm going to take this hand I'm going to put it underneath here and I'm going to hopefully catch that piston. Oh, I can feel it coming through there. And then just give it a little push and it's about to pop out. There it goes. Cleaned up the skirt just a little bit. Now you can see that. There's a little bit of wear here. I'm okay with that. A little bit of wear right there, not bad. Let's go look at the cylinder bore. So now let's take a look at cylinder one, the cylinder bore. Let's see, I got my fancy flashlight here. There's a little bit of wear there, but there's no scoring. Check that out. So that is the exhaust side. Oh, there we go, that's a good look. And notice I marked the block or the deck with exhaust and intake so that way I don't get confused. And also a quick way to tell is there are cuts in the piston for the intake valves. Usually there's a cut for the exhaust valves too and the intake will always be larger cuts. And check out that. So that is cylinder one. That looks pretty good. There's not very much scoring there. You can see the cross hatching as well. And let's compare and contrast to cylinder four. The bore in cylinder four, that little red dot in there, those are, uh, that's coolant. You could see the cross hatching, but you could also see some scoring right there. Just to the left of the lowest dot, you could see the up and down scoring in addition to the cross hatching. Let's see what the other side looks like. The other side, there's some scoring as well, right there. So, is this bad? Yes, but again, I only need this motor to run for so long. Obviously the compression will be a little bit lower here, 
But leak down, it'll still be the same because recall when you do leak down, the piston is at top dead center. So let's just take a look at those. Okay, so that's one. You saw a good one. And this one, a not so good one. Is it bad, bad? Probably not. But let's take a look at the piston. Yeah, and just take this guy right here. We can take these bolts out. And we can take a look at this rod bearing. And again, if you notice this little divot right here, this guy right here is pointing that way towards one. Again, this is the rod cap. Sometimes the bearing gets stuck there. Oh, the bearing came out with it. So this one looks quite similar. There's a little bit of scarring that comes across right here. So let's take a look at the other side. So I'm gonna push the rod down just a little bit. So now I'm gonna push the rod down, put my hand underneath to grab the piston. And I'm not pushing on the bearing surface, pushing on the end of the rod. There it goes. This one doesn't have any debris in it. It does have a little bit of scarring, but minimal. That's great. Who knows how many, how many miles are on this motor? So this is the intake side. You can kind of see the lines right there. So that could have been where we had some debris in there or something like that. Let's see, let's see the other side. Again, you can kind of see some, some lines. There's one right there. There's another one right there. And that's probably what that scoring is that's inside the cylinder board. So now you can get a good look at that bearing. See, there is a little bit of scoring there. Not bad, but again, this motor only has to last just a little bit until I get my K-Series running. So recall, we looked at the number four uh, rod journal on, I'm sorry, the number one rod journal on the crank right here, remember there's that little line right there. You can kind of see the small line right there. A little scoring right there. And look, here's number four. Number four, there's no scoring on it whatsoever. That looks really, really clean. There's no marks on there whatsoever. So let's look at two and three next. But before we do that, let's mark all of our stuff so we don't get any mixed up. And here's how I marked the piston assemblies. So that's the piston and the rod, and you can see I marked the rod cap, and then I also marked the bearings. You'll see that that's one upper and one lower, and then here's number four, and there's number four upper and number four lower, and you can see that I marked the piston as well, and I marked intake so that way I'll know, and I also cleaned up the bolts. Let's go, to, let's go and do number two and number three. Okay, so now we want to examine two and three rod bearings. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the crank so that way two and three pistons are at the lowest point and that'll actually put the rod caps at the highest point in this configuration because we're upside down. So here are the two of them are right here. So let's work on two and get this guy out. 10 millimeter, 12 point. Let's break these things loose. Break this one loose. Might as well do three while we're here. Now I'm just gonna take my socket, loosen them up, not all the way, just so that way I can loosen it up, smack it with a hammer, and get the caps off. So I'm gonna do this one at a time so we don't mix anything up. Okay, let's just focus on two for right now. stuck this is a one so this was a one this is a, a two and this was a one and I'm talking about the bearing is a number one right here well, it looks pretty good minimal scarring nothing major that looks pretty good okay let's push it down with the hands first remember don't push on the bearing push on the rod and take your other hand and put it underneath so you catch the assembly coming down. Kind of have to get the rod pointing straight up and down and then push on it. There it goes. There's number two. Let's take a look at the rod bearing. Minimal scarring. That looks good. Side skirt. Looks pretty good as well. Other side skirt. 
that looks pretty good. There's a little bit of wear there, but nothing bad. We already tapped this thing down, so we're just gonna loosen these guys, and we're gonna remove the rod cap one more time on number three. Look at the orientation. Make sure that you memorize that or mark it like I do. Look at that. Minimal scarring, looks pretty good. Okay, this time I'm bringing you guys in a little tighter. So you could see that that's the rod right there. That's the bottom of the rod. So what you're looking at, you're looking at this part of the rod here and here. You can see it right in there. Actually, it's this way. So you can see the rod right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this little hammer to push on this edge right here. I actually like to push on this edge over here. So I'm gonna push on this edge just a little bit. Actually, let me do it with my fingers first. So I'll take, usually I like to do it with my thumbs. So I'll take my thumbs, and I'm not gonna push very far. I'm just gonna push it down a little bit, down the chamber. See how it lowered right there, that guy? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place my end of my hammer, my wood hammer. I'm gonna push it right here. And what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna try and keep it, once it gets past this circle right here, which is the, the rod journal, it's gonna to wanna to flop. And I don't want it to flop and hit the cylinder wall, so I'm gonna control it with this guy. So I'm gonna put my hand, my left hand, underneath, so I can catch the piston as I push it through. So here, I'm gonna push it down a little bit. And meanwhile, I'm controlling, see right there, it just flopped that way. So when I go in here, I'm gonna take my hammer, I'm gonna try and grab it and rotate it. It flopped all the way over there. Use my screwdriver and grab that thing. There. Now you can see it down there but again, it flopped it just a little bit too far. So I can push on this end too. Now you can kind of see it. Whoops, don't let it go too far. Try and keep that thing centered up and then give it a push and then put your hand underneath and catch it and stop it from rocking back and forth so that way it doesn't scratch the bore. Take your time and just be careful. That's how you pull it out. Let's take a look at that thing. That thing looks pretty good. And then you could see both of the raw journals, two and three both look really good. And skirts look good. Okay, if you remember, all I was gonna do was switch the head gasket. And so since I was just gonna switch the head gasket, I left the flywheel on so to minimize the amount of work that I was gonna do. Well, now that we took the pistons out and the rods out we're gonna look at the main bearings which means we'll have to remove the girdle so what I did was I took it off the stand well before I took it off the stand I put the oil pan back on and then I put it on to this cherry picker right here and I pulled it off the stand so we'll have to remove the engine stand adapter and we'll have to remove the flywheel and then after we do that, I'm gonna put this block onto my new toy, which is my Sunex 1,000 pound engine stand, which has a geared head. So notice here that this thing is attached permanently right here and it has a gear right here. So it actually rotates it real slow and you don't have any other pieces to it, which I thought was kind of cool. Anyhow, that's what we're doing. Let's get started on this guy. Don't forget when you remove your oil pump, there's a gasket behind it. This is it right here. And I would suggest replacing either this or replacing this whole oil pump and getting a brand new one.
So now I'm going to remove these guys right here. Let's just take a look at what they look like. There you can see the number three right there. So I'm going to mark this one as number one. You can tell the top from the bottom because there's a oil galley that pumps oil into the bearing right there. That's a really nice design. No clue what that number is. I'll look at that one, but in any case, this one's number two. It might say on the other bearing, so. Oh, I, th I think I see a slight three right there. Anyway, we'll put a three here. You kind of see the two right there. Let me turn that around. So I'll put a four here. This one has a three on it. Clearly see that one. So let's put a five right here. And check this thing out. Remember yesterday I was concerned because a couple of the bearings had numberings on it that you couldn't really see but maybe it was just that it was dark but you can pretty much see them now but obviously the Toyotas are all matte so you can see that's the one out of number one it's threes number two is two three is a three four is two and then five is a three so I order more of those and here are the thrust bearings there's a little bit of wear right here okay here's number one doesn't really seem like there's any wear. Here's two. Two looks pretty good. Three looks pretty good as well. There is this little striation right there. You can kind of see it. That same striation is also in the crank. At least I think it is. We'll look at that in a second. Here's number four. Four looks really clean as well. And then here's five. There's five right there. It looks like there's a little bit of material that's embedded in there. You know, overall it looks really, really good. So let's look at the crank. Yeah, I could feel that with my nail right there. And if you notice, let me bring this guy in. Look, see that little line right there? Let's see if I can't get it. Yeah, you can see a little line right there. There's a line on it, and that matches it perfectly where it is. So there must have been some sort of debris that got in there that ate that thing up. Not bad. So here's number four. Number four looks pretty good. And then number five looks pretty good too. Let's not forget my main objective. It's to get this 1ZZ running so I can drive my MRS while I'm building my K20A2. So don't trip if everything isn't perfect. Thanks again for watching. Leave a like, leave a comment, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button to see the next episode. Also, check out my new e-store www.relentlessracing.myshopify.com and know I'll be adding more product lines soon. Stay relentless and I'll see you on the track. Drop the little. Oh, there it is. I see one. Where's the other one? Oh, there's the other one. Shit.